What's going on you guys? In this video, I wanna get a little more specific on why a total gym or starting bench trainer can be great for uh, either obese, morbidly obese, uh, overweight, plus size, whatever you wanna say, uh, individuals, that demographic basically. Because uh, my, my, my assumption is that a lot of people either have this machine or are thinking about picking up this machine, probably are gonna fall you know, within those that demographic I just kinda laid out there. I did make some other uh, previous videos alluding to this or to help you guys out as well. Um, one was just uh, plus size, total gym for plus size and seniors. And I think seniors can actually benefit from this video, but I wanna go a little more detail uh, into that plus size demographic on some, not just positions and kind of exercise and ways of kind of getting in and out of the machine, uh, but also just kind of getting into, you know, why they're, I understand the problem that many of you are having, just kind of finding some exercise that actually suits you, but also, you know, why the total gym and study bench trainer, in my opinion, is a great solution uh, to, to you guys and just finding some sort of practical way to get some resistance training, physical movement in your day. Uh, so that's pretty much what I'll get into. Uh, if you guys like this content, please consider liking and or subscribing. I will put uh, timestamps down below if you guys wanna jump to a specific section. I'll put links in the description box for a number of the things I will uh, discuss and recommend as well. Uh, and just ultimately too, if you guys can definitely share this content, if you know someone who either has this machine, is thinking about picking up something like this, or you think you can actually benefit from this information, uh, definitely share this content, because that was another reason why I wanted to make videos like this, is because if I get some uh, vocal questions or people that I know that I think would benefit from it, I can just send them this video, and it kind of goes lays out a lot of some other fundamental things that I think would be, to be useful to them. Um, before also one more thing before I forget, I'll link some other kind of core good videos like the beginner's guide video I recently did that uh, I think it'll be um, kind of go hand in hand with some of the things I'll be getting into. Uh, and like I said, the other plus size video I think would also be helpful as well. Now briefly, just to kind of present some of the problems I understand you guys are having, I don't necessarily want to get into some, telling you guys something you don't already know. But my point is I understand that when you get to that plus size or even morbidly obese category, Finding effective or just good forms of exercise that fit you can be really cumbersome and difficult because I understand at this point, you know, getting into certain positions, your range of motion is limited, your joints maybe feel kind of anky, you feel kind of unstable in certain positions. Um, and like traditional means like going to the gym is not only a lot more cumbersome, it takes a lot more physical energy and time out of the day to actually make that work for you. Uh, also considering that, like, well, intimidation is always a factor for everybody, but especially for your demographic, trying to figure out, well, what's a machine that fits me, not feeling like you might get stuck in a certain position, like if you're laying on a bench and trying to get up and out of a bench, uh, that can be an intimidation factor in, in itself. So I think a lot of people, naturally what they do is they start thinking of, okay, well, I'll do some exercise at home. And even that can be kind of like slim pickings on like what can be a good form of exercise for you. People might pick up resistance bands, uh, dumbbells and stuff like that. And that's great, but in my opinion, that stuff can be still kind of limiting and it can be kind of monotonous and in my opinion, isn't the most like motivating thing to do. But what's great about a total gym or sliding bench trainer is that you have a lot of different variety and range of motion and options that you guys can actually do and work with. Um, granted, you gotta consider the machine you're picking up. Like I, this is a total gym fit, so this can handle up to like 450 pound weight limit. Um, the Total Gym XLS can handle up to 40, 400 pounds weight limit. Um, I like this model though specifically, again, for um, the demographics I'm describing because you have a lot more increments in the sides, you have a lot more play with what you can do. Uh, that great flex machine that I featured as well is another good option. And if, if this is, maybe you need something that's a little bit more, kind of like more um, kind of souped up, that has a lot more options like the uh, GTS models and the Compass models, those are a lot more expensive, but those give you a lot more flexibility and range of motion, or I should say, um, yeah, just flexibility and the fact that the thing can actually go up parallel. Those are great, but they're just super expensive. So I wanna provide you getting into this video, just some options if you have a machine like this, which is still great. And like I said, has a lot of op a lot of room for flexibility. However, you are gonna be limited somewhat to someone who is a little bit more able-bodied than you because getting in and out of a machine might feel a little scary in some instances, which is why I wanted to make this video. Uh, but the great thing is the better you improve in this machine, the better your overall range of motion is and the more options it opens up for you to actually excel and get some progress out of this machine. So in my opinion, I don't think there's anything that comes close to matching the at-home capabilities and effectiveness and efficiency of something like this machine compared to anything else that's out there in the market that would help you guys and your demographic. That's just my opinion. Now just as we're kind of approaching the total gym, you're kind of thinking about picking this up, a couple things just to kind of highlight and point out. First thing really briefly is that don't view this as like some form of weight loss machine. Uh, just like any form of resistance training, the idea of like working the pounds away is just like a uphill battle to kind of think about in your head. Yes, it'll play a role among other lifestyle factors, 
like your stress levels and especially diet would be a huge one. Uh, but kind of get that out of your head. More so of you using a total gym or just doing resistance training and exercise as you, you're, you're a human, you're meant to do some physical movement and based on your being just being overweight or morbidly obese, I understand that your motivation to do movement or your lack of ability to do that is kind of hindered. So predominantly when you're doing something like this and you're, you know, you're doing the exercises on here or anything else, one of the big benefits you're gonna get right away is just one psychological mental benefit. You're supposed to move your body. There's tons of proven benefits to just why physical exercise can be beneficial to you psychologically. Uh, but then obviously your muscle skeletal, just range of motion, your physiology in general, you simply moving your body, exercising your body has many, many benefits. Uh, and it just makes sense if you're not doing that, the more and more your age, the more weight you're kind of putting on. Uh, a number of things are happening in your body, but predominantly, you know, if you don't kind of use it, you're gonna lose it. That means like your muscles, tendons, ligaments, your flexibility, range of motion, your shoulders, obviously your weight and your metabolic health and all sorts of things that go along with just not being physically active. And then for some total gym attachments, I've talked about this a lot. You know, if you definitely get a, a larger squat stand, it's gonna be very beneficial. Uh, that would be primarily the first thing I would pick up. And I have a link, uh, a total gym attachments link down below if you guys wanna check that out. Again, support the channel too, it helps me out. Uh, and then, and or some sort of Pilates bar attachment, this would be good too. If you got at least this, this would be okay, but this helps kind of holding on and getting in and out of positions, which I'll show you later in some exercises. And then definitely feel free to kind of use other modalities. I'll mention that briefly, but there's some other great things that you guys can do and incorporate. So even though we're focusing on the total gym, there's some other great things you can do. Like a kettlebell would be great for doing things like maybe some squatting and deadlifting and hinging patterns. Um, again, primarily, I would say definitely you can get by just having one of these, but some other stuff will be beneficial. Um, some loop style resistance bands for a number of things, even some tube style resistance bands. These are relatively inexpensive. Uh, these are some other options that you guys can do for like some curls that might be a little harder to do in some positions. Uh, maybe some overhead presses, which we'll get into that can be difficult for some people as well. Uh, a good pair of, of adjustable dumbbells might be another option if you guys haven't thought of that. This is all just kind of extra stuff. My point is you don't have to be like a purist when we're looking at just a total gym, but point is you could if you really wanted to with these things definitely be beneficial and give you guys some other options. Now the other thing is just where you're gonna put this thing. So I would just one last thing before we get into the actual exercises is that if it's kind of out of sight, it's gonna be out of mind. So for me, yes, I keep it in my basement. It's pretty, even though I say I like to break it down, it's, it's in my face when I walk down in the basement all the time for better or for worse among the other sliding benches I have. Uh, but that's kind of a good thing. And if you're someone who's gonna buy a piece of equipment like this and you're gonna put it somewhere like in a back like storage area, unfinished part of your basement, and you're just not gonna use it, or you slide under your bed and you kind of forget about it, and you know you're not someone who's really motivated to do that, to do a lot of exercise, um, I would maybe suggest you, it's okay, put it somewhere obtrusive, put it somewhere that's in your face, in your, in your house. There's people I know that watch the channel that say that this thing's in their living room, literally, or maybe if you're like in an apartment, it's kind of set up there somewhere. You can collapse these down pretty good, and you guys know that, but the point is, Definitely be mindful that put this somewhere as a focal point because another great thing is actually if it's if it's in like a living room, you're more likely not only just to use it, but you can actually be a great kind of distraction method. So you can simply do a lot of these things we can do in here at your own pace, just watching TV, uh, listening to something on the computer, whatever, and just kind of go through the motions of the things we'll be getting into in this video. So definitely pay special attention to where you're put, placing this thing. Uh, keep it somewhere that you're more likely to kind of see it uh, versus not see it. Now in my previous video, I talked about uh, this kind of four positional model when approaching the machine that might be helpful for someone who's a plus size or senior as well. Uh, but even this video, I'm gonna get into really make it even more basic and just say, if you're approaching this machine or even as like a form of kind of thinking about a way of kind of designing your exercises, I'm really gonna focus in on just kind of basic pushing setups, basic pulling setups, and then really just primarily legs. And then I'll get in briefly a little bit about some single joint stuff as well. I'm not gonna kinda do too much of a uh, overlap of what I discussed in our previous videos, like my beginner video, uh, which again, which I'll link that down below if you guys are curious. That goes into a lot of other details that I think will be helpful and you guys should watch. I wanna primarily focus in on just kinda grabbing the machine, setting up in the machine, and then just some little considerations, uh, again, for you guys specifically. Uh, I met a reference to the chair. The chairs can be something, it, can, it doesn't be a chair, it can be something like this, but I find just this heavy duty folding chair, which you can find at any like Walmart or whatever, uh, Amazon sells them as well. Again, like this was 300 pounds tested. Not that you need that much to really just put your weight on, but the point is this isn't like a really cheap chair. Keeping these kind of close by is useful. Uh, having this on carpet is useful. If you don't have carpet on wood floors, it can slide a little bit. So if you don't have carpet, like some sort of stall mat, uh, you can find it like some sort of like a farm and fleet type of store, or again, Walmart, um, 
Amazon also puts some stall mats, but my point is if you're getting to be in that, you're in that plus size category, you feel a little uneasy about getting in and out of the machine, having, making, not having to worry about this thing sliding is a very, very important thing. So definitely kind of keep, keep, keep that in the kind of back of your head in consideration. Uh, you want to feel as comfortable as possible, not feel uh, too scary, too scared about just getting in and out of the machine. So first we'll just set up the actual pushing related exercises and some things to kind of consider. I'm going to go ahead and attach the cable, uh, which even this, honestly, as I'm talking out loud, can be a problem for some people, which I understand. Uh, the ability to kind of get in my knees and grab that for some, for some people can be hard. Uh, something I'll say is you don't really want to get in the habit of pulling this because if you have a hard time bending down, I've ripped the fabric by yanking on this too much. So I like to kind of grab the top, pull it up a little bit, hold it. This way you're a nice tall angle kind of feel it that way versus kind of having to get in your knees like I did. So I'm trying to, again, think about you guys as much as I can. Notice I got these in here. I'll reference this later. I got these push-up pull-up bars in reversed. Uh, this will help you on some things, kind of getting in and out to kind of put your feet on this to help you give yourself a little bit of a boost. Uh, again, I'm recognizing the fact that just setting this up can be a hard thing. So you might need someone to kind of get down there and help you initially set it up. but. Uh, these are just some other little things that I'm, again, I'm thinking about in the pop, top of my head. Now, what I found to be a problem with the machine in general is really when the tower height is super low. So when it's like this, we think a lot that for a beginner, well, let's have the tower height low, you know, to help them. It's not as hard to kind of push and pull and do a variety of things. But for someone who is overweight, morbidly overweight or overbeast or whatever, uh, getting in this position is very, very difficult. Uh, we can go this way if we got some sort of support there. We can utilize the chairs if we really need to, but getting this low uh, for a lot of people is gonna be a struggle. And then let alone kind of getting out. So these chairs can be helpful using the bottom part or top part, but you know, rocking forward and pressing yourself up, that would be good, like hips first and leaning up. Uh, my point is when we start getting to like just the basic pushing exercises, I personally would actually recommend at a higher setting and then utilizing our feet to kind of help us a little bit more. So I'd put this a little bit higher, maybe like a moderate height like that. Got the safety bar in. We might even go higher in a second, but the big scary thing is, is sitting down and I'll go slower in a second, but the idea of having no support here, I'm gonna sit down and what tends to happen is we move the, we start bringing our arms back to kind of like brace ourselves, therefore moving the machine and this thing kind of moves on us and that's kind of a scary thing and obviously we don't want to fall behind or fall backwards. So the big thing is keep the elbows locked out. Try not to move your arms at all. Make sure you have a, your, your hand is tightly gripped around with your thumb around the handle and then just kind of sit back down in that position. That's some basic thing just to kind of remember always is to not move your arms around as you're sitting down and kind of somewhat basically trust yourself. And you can even walk a little bit higher up and kind of straddle it and sit down this way. But the point is we're trying to find that basically as minimal of a sit down as possible. Now, if we're gonna sit down and set up to do a press or any kind of chest press this way, what I do is I simply, instead of twisting and rotating our hands around, if I'm gonna, I'm gonna grab my left hand, gonna grab it here just from the side, then I'm just gonna spin around. Right hand grabs the right one. I'm gonna walk over this. Now this is probably the riskiest thing for some people. For some people this is very easy. I just kinda step over. And then at this position, all I'm gonna do is I can do an initial pull if I want to and set up here. But then I'm gonna walk back nice and as far back as I can. This way I don't have to, I don't have to get down that low. And I'm already like a minimal sit down. You can see how much effort did I actually put into just sitting in this position was really pretty much nothing. So again, I could go here and sit down, but now you're gonna have to walk your feet up here and odds are you're gonna be bottoming out of something I mentioned in previous videos, the back of the glide board on the tower. So instead, what I'd have you do is once you're in this position, you can bring your hands up to your chest first, walk back to your about, you know, about three fourths or basically the end of the, I should say the end of the glide board, minimal sit down, and then essentially you're ready to go for that press. All right, and this hopefully most people feels pretty comfortable. Uh, if you are a shorter person, which that could be the case too, making that little step over might be a little hard, uh, but then I would just, you know, lower the tower height anyways, because you're gonna want at least your feet on the ground. But even if you were, you know, shorter and you wanted to do that and minimize that step, I could step towards the end of the machine, 
walk backwards a little bit, bring up to my chest, sit down, and now I'm ready to go. I'm not gonna talk too much about the fundamentals of pressing because that was already in uh, some previous videos. Again, that beginner video, I linked that down below if you guys wanna check that out. But the main thing is, is as we're doing a press for someone, again, who's a little bit more on the overweight side, we're not gonna be doing things like this or doing fancy stuff like that. You don't have to. I would just simply sit up nice and tall on the back of the glide board and let's just use our feet. So even though this is on a higher setting, uh, higher, higher tower height, which is still harder, we can still use our feet to kind of dissipate that force. And as I said in the previous videos that I mentioned, I'm referencing through that beginner video, even me just doing this with moderate tension and keeping in mind that the heavier you are, the heavier this is gonna be, uh, this is still you know, somewhat difficult as I'm pressing through. Again, there's a lot of stuff I wanna say here about feeling it through your chest, not your shoulders or your arms, but that's in other videos I get into. But the point is using your legs to kind of dissipate that force. But the main thing is I just wanted to show you how to get in and out of just like a basic press position. Now, if you were in this position later, again, can we do some single joint stuff? Yeah, we can. But even this now starts to get a little cumbersome where like now I can kind of use my feet again to kind of do some pulling and row or curls, I should say. Uh, but now we got to get out of this machine. What are we going to do? So now essentially we do the same thing we did. Walk yourself back up. We're just going to lean in. Keep with, the, with my elbows kind of bent like this. Lean in. The fly board's going to move. I'm going to stand up. Put my hands down. Walk over to the end of the fly board. Step over. And then I can either cross it or I can go back, just reverse the order of everything that I did before. And you'd have your basic setup for doing any kind of a push exercise. Now that kind of covered the basis for like a proper setup uh, for basic horizontal pressing. Uh, keeping in mind there's all different types of variations of these types of presses you can do. Now the other types of pushing or pressing related exercises we'd have is just stuff with our shoulders. And so what can we do or what are some options for you guys that might be limited in some other positions on a total gym? Now one great exercise that is awesome on a total gym that may or may not be a limiting factor for you giving, given your size or um, just how easy it is for you to get down and up off the ground would be the inverted press uh, for your shoulders. That's an excellent exercise. Uh, there are some things you maybe could think about. Um, I'll give you guys a secondary option if you guys can't do that. Maybe not possibly now, maybe in the future you guys can get to it. The big problem you guys are gonna face is, which I understand is, it is a little awkward and a little different uh, to kind of get into this inverted press, not just in the getting in the position, but then getting off the position. In this case, it would actually be the opposite recommendation I'd recommend to most people, because I'd understand that for most people, having this thing in a big incline and then getting into this inverted press position can be kind of tough. So. If I was gonna try anything, I'd actually probably recommend trying a low setting because if you had a chair, if you can get this low, if this is an option to kind of get onto your knees like this, if this is a possibility, it would honestly be easier to be at this position, kind of roll on your stomach this way and do the press just like this. And even though this seems kind of easy or it might look easy, you're bearing in mind you got a lot more weight you're pressing. So the incline doesn't have to be so dramatic and so high. And again, if you're at this position, it's easier to kind of roll off and roll on. Uh, also considering if you can get up off the ground, you got some support system somewhere here. Uh, this would be an option to kind of get back up as well on your feet. The other option we can do is simply, once you're in this regular press position, once you're right here like we got to before, uh, simply just going single-handed. It's hard to do this double-handed like this, even regardless of you know your your shoulder mobility, etc. But just holding it in one hand and basically doing a, a, a single arm press just like this. Again, we can use our legs to kind of dissipate the force. What I would recommend is that you kind of lean in a little bit. This way it kind of mimics that line of action in the machine. And I'm just pressing up in this angle. I'm not trying to press like straight up. That would be it would feel just kind of weird intuitively, but lean in a little bit more and press basically through essentially right through your shoulder line it might be better to show you here but again i would just rotate sides i lean in a little bit you could use this to kind of brace and just do some you know 10 to 20 repetitions whatever kind of works uh, with feeling based off of you and it should feel comfortable work with that range of motion if it feels uncomfortable just like with anything probably don't do it 
Now transitioning to any kind of pulling related exercises or pulling patterns, it's gonna be fairly similar to the setup on the pushing uh, with some little minor exceptions. I feel that at least what I've noticed with some people, uh, what I viewed personally is that uh, people that are again in the heavier side and I've seen someone that was uh, in the heavier side definitely uh, who's also in their 70s so it made things extra hard and cumbersome they were fairly kind of mobile for the most part but they found this and setting up in this position fairly scary and kind of daunting uh, to maybe say the least but for the most part you can hold it with, with both hands neutral like this I have to kind of have a cross grip meaning that my left hand is going to grab the right side and my right hand is gonna grab the left side as like a cross grip position. And we can do the same kind of setup where we're basically gonna hold on, start with holding the cables first, walk towards as far you know low as you want to make a minimal step. And then we're gonna go walk right back up, straddling the, the glide board, sitting ideally as high as we can. So again, we don't have to get as much of a dip in that sit down. And then we're essentially set up here, ready to go. Uh, one little thing I noticed, well, I mentioned this in a previous video again, I believe it was that beginner video, which I'll keep referencing and I'll keep, I'll keep saying that, but uh, I have carabiner clips in here. I would just tell people again, stick with the original baseline clips uh, because they can kind of lock together. And if I, I can't do it right here, there you go. If that happens, that can be annoying for some people and then you might have a problem kind of getting out. Otherwise, with that being said, whichever way you're rowing, you can see you're pretty much set up, ready to go. Uh, whether that's a close, whether that's a cross grip or a regular grip, whether I want to do a single arm, having these attached again, I reference that in other videos. So you got all your different kind of pulling related exercises that work your back, and then again your biceps as well. But I kind of went over that pretty quick. But the point was, from some people, this getting sitting down just again is very scary because it's very even though you're kind of has a, has a more of a visual than maybe the last one. I find that people are just uneasy about sitting down with no extra base of support. This again would be an example where a chair might be beneficial just mentally for some people to have this here as a support. Even though this, in my opinion, this is a little bit more uneasy, people might feel comfortable having some sort of support system here or slightly onto the side and then they can grab on here. And likewise, when you're done, how do you get out of this? Again, we would try, you might, what might happen again when you're doing this to get out might be a little harder because now we've kind of slid down the machine versus before on the push, we can kind of sit up a little higher and kind of brace ourselves. But now you notice I really slid down this thing. So getting off for some people might be an issue. If that is the case, I'd recommend just reaching or letting go one. And now I got one extended here. I can essentially have that kind of a boost there. But basically this is where I would kind of lean in and kind of brace myself with two hands. So I have an extra hand to kind of support myself to stand back up. But the point I'm saying is once you kind of sit down, be mindful that you got to get back off this thing. So when you're done, you can let go of one, let go of the other, but your feet are kind of braced here and I can kind of stand straight up this way. And again, I would just simply walk back. If you got a chair next to you, step over and then you guys are good. Now, some of the same problems we had for the inverted press, we may have for a uh, basically a lying pull down or a horizontal pull or like a pull up basically on a total gym. Another great exercise that I hate to have you guys miss out on, but again, based on kind of the, the body shape for some people, basically, again, I alluded to this earlier, but lying flat in your stomach for doing inverted press can be uncomfortable. I understand maybe not doable, doable for some people. If it is possible, uh, that might be an option, but again, kind of getting in and out might be a little cumbersome. Uh, so your options that I would do if you got pull-up bars attached is kind of have them have this already attached to allow you to kind of guide the thing up to kind of get into that position uh, but you could detach this if you wanted to generally but i'm going to have this attached i'm going to walk it up a little bit kind of brace myself step over and then notice what i did here i actually left now i got two handles of this i'm not saying to go ahead and buy two handles maybe i am but i got the different uh I figure what these are called now. There's a different type of pull-up attachment that the Total Gym sells, but I have these attachments and the ones that kind of came with it. I left the inverted press how it was, kind of inverted facing this way. You could put it the other way, but I left it this way on purpose for a number of things. But one is just a little bit of a boost to kind of get out from the bottom. If you can get to this position, if you can lay yourself up here and at least get to here, I think this is a good kind of starting point. Uh, again, I can go just nice and slow as I'm doing this, this pull-up. 
And if I kind of get stuck or if I need a little extra boost, I can use my feet or my whatever to kind of help myself, guide myself up in this, pu in this pull up if I need to. You may not need it at all, but again, it also helps kind of getting off the machine so I can kind of give myself a little bit of a push with my feet, walk off, hold on to this thing, push myself up, one foot, two foot, step over, and you guys are good. All right, so the next thing we're gonna get into is just doing some leg exercises and some leg options for you. Again, morbidly obese, overweight, being able to work the legs, work the lower body is important. What is great with a total gym, because of this incline, it takes a lot of stress off that lower back, a lot of stress off the knees, especially, again, I'm not, I don't know everybody's situation, but it might more so than saying, telling a, a um, uh, again, a plus size individual to be doing a lot of body weight chair squats. These are definitely great for sure. And these are something you can do if you had a table and maybe you've been instructed to kind of do this. Great exercise to do, um, but also show you there's a lot more options with kind of like leg presses that kind of dissipate some of that force on the legs. Maybe allow you to get a little more rep repetitions than normal than doing like some leg exercises here. Um, obviously there's stuff in the gym you can do again, or even like squats with barbells and stuff like that. But uh, and some hinging patterns I, I showed you guys earlier with like the kettlebell uh, on a visual earlier, but great thing that I actually showed in a recent workout was if you're using this Pilates bar attachment, what's great is that you can essentially create your own little box squat using the incline of the machine and you can vary the height and progress this uh, again using this incline on the tower height. So this is again, maybe considering on your height, I would say for most people this might be this could be moderate to a little bit higher intensity in the fact that I'm gonna get a little bit lower than I traditionally would. This is like a basic chair. My knees are a little bit higher than my hips. This is gonna require a little bit more out of my legs, especially a little more of my glutes, a little bit more of my hamstrings to kind of get up from this bottom position. I'd say, well, just overall, all your legs are quadriceps especially too. But what's great is I can use this Pilates bar attachment as kind of like a, a nice little boost. I can kind of rock forward and depending on what you're working with, lean forward, kind of give yourself a little pull. And then once I'm here, I'm just gonna stand up and I got this as you know something to hold on to. And then just kind of repeat that exercise, that movement again, all right? But I got this as a nice little boost. Certainly, again, you could use, utilize the chairs if you got stuck, keeping this nearby. If you couldn't get out, we can make this higher if you're just starting out, all right? So again, you can see Pretty great. You really start getting good with it. You know, you got a much lower decline. I mean, this is a great, great exercise in my opinion, working in that range of motion, working that depth, again, according to your own personal limitations, but another great way just to kind of work progressively, working your depth and with what you can do. Uh, certainly you could always load this up with some sort of weight, um, you know, doing an option this way. So tons of different things you can do. So showing those basic leg presses, I'm gonna go ahead and put the larger squat stand in, which depending on the model that you guys bought, the package you got may have come with this, may have not have, but I definitely opt to pick up one of these bigger ones. Uh, what I was alluding to earlier also in the beginning video, if you don't have the Pilates bar attachment, this certainly suffices in place of that previous exercise I did. So this would be another option too, as like a saver if you don't wanna get both those things. But what is great again, is that takes some of the stress off, maybe the lower back, the knees, maybe this exercise I just showed you wasn't gonna work for you. This should work pretty good. I'm in a nice, keep my, be able to keep my feet a little bit higher. Feet, feet turned out slightly, knees are even with my toes essentially. And I can just do little presses here. That was a little noisy. Um, again, the lower I can get, the lower I can get the better, all right? The range of motion I can get. But the point is for some people, this doesn't look like a whole lot of work, but again, if you're a heavier person, you're pressing more, uh, and this is just a nice, easy way, I shouldn't say easy, but a nice way of kind of degressing or progressing level of intensity. This is something easy that for the most part, people can do, again, watching TV, distracting yourself, getting some range of motion, getting some exercise in the lower extremities. Uh, I could talk on and on and on about why this is a good exercise, uh, but, you guys get the idea, very flexible, very um, versatile in the way you wanna manipulate this. Um, what's great again is let's say you're having a hard time getting in and out, something you can do to kind of help you. Get, if you get stuck, you can put the reverse, the uh, push-up bars or the inverted press bars, whatever, the pull-up bars, the other way, 
and you can kind of use this to kind of walk yourself up and then stand up. And again, if it's at a high setting, I can sit down. I again can use these to kind of manipulate getting on and off or my depth that I want to get to, you know, and then again, keep up with the, with the exercises. For the sake of length and brevity of this video, I'm not gonna, this video is already going on long, but there's a lot of things you can do to attach resistance bands here, uh, attach some external weight with the weight bar attachment. Um, you can put some weight plates on through here. So tons of different options. Again, in my opinion, for most people starting out where you are, perfect, great exercises to do with your lower legs. For and I almost forgot, you know, don't forget, there's always the option of single leg, always the option of kind of working this range of motion. But now you might've saw this, heap of straps sitting below me. You might've been wondering what, I, what this is doing here. Uh, these are my TRX straps that are very faded from being outside this uh, last fall and summer. But this is an option that I believe someone actually told me in a comment section they did uh, to kind of help them get in and out of different positions. Uh, especially if, again, as you're older, trying to pull yourself out of something, maybe you can do the seated one, that's okay, but maybe you wanna try the basic traditional kind of leg press in a total gym, where once you're at this position, I can take my feet up. Again, I can always have chairs there to help me assist me or something. And I can essentially assist myself in this low position. And maybe you wanna just get used to doing exercises like this, like the basic basic squats for whatever reason, which is again, another great exercise because I can kind of get some more kind of a functional squat where I'm pressing more how I naturally would, but again, taking some stress off my lower back. If you want to do this, the big thing people struggle with is getting out of this. So. A lot of people at this position, how are you gonna get out of this? I can either roll out this way, um, I can push off and then put my foot down, but then again, it's, for some people, this is gonna be pretty hard to do. Um, again, I got these things here to kind of help you support yourself so that this would actually help you kind of sit up, but the sit up can be the hard part and that's where this strap comes in. If I have it attached, something like this, a uh, heavy duty strap, it could be an Olympic, bar or Olympic ring strap as well. Some sort of canvas strap that from here, all I can do is I'm gonna kind of use this to brace myself and kind of help pull myself up. Again, I got this thing here to kind of give myself a little extra boost. And I can, again, use the chair, lean forward and step back up. I recognize as I'm saying this, this might look easy for some people or you're watching this and it might seem like it's easy when it's really difficult. I understand that. Uh, I don't mean to kind of breeze through these things. For some people, this is gonna be a struggle to kind of work around these things. Point is, take your time, go at your own pace, uh, and you guys will be good. So we're getting ready to wrap up the video, and hopefully what's been presented so far will help some of you guys out, and this isn't just kind of overkill uh, in some of this information. I believe I haven't really shared any of this stuff before, at least some of the positional ways to kind of get in and out of the machine. Uh, just some last minute stuff to kind of to touch on before I kind of wrap this video up, I know this is gonna be probably one of my longest videos, is what to do with your single joint exercises. So single joint is anything where it's just one joint. So really isolated elbow exercises like curls, tricep extensions, uh, rear flies, I'm sorry, like rear flies this way, anything with the shoulder. So you still have tons of options and all those positional setups will help you guys get into that. With the single joint exercises, unfortunately, there, I mean, there's a lot of things you can do, again, a lot of extra stuff you can do, but if you're looking to like isolate the arms and triceps, in this position, you're actually, in my opinion, you're gonna to have to put it a little bit lower just because on, because since again, you're working with more weight, doing things like a rear fly like this is pretty hard and you definitely need to rely upon a lot lower tower height and the ability to use your legs. So even though we taught a lot about getting into a position that's higher up in the machine, for a lot of these single joint exercises, I'm gonna recommend you definitely drop the tower down and this allows you to kind of make things like bicep curls a little bit easier and doable because if you're, say you're 300 plus pounds, doing a bicep curl at a higher incline, one, it's gonna be hard to kind of use your feet at this angle, uh, and it's gonna, be, it's gonna be pretty tough. You're pulling a lot of weight. So you're gonna to have to kind of get comfortable or find ways, like we talked about in the video, some support mechanisms to kind of get in the low setting, because this is gonna allow you to kind of work, in my opinion, a workable uh, intensity to allow you to kind of get some repetitions. Again, I'm also still using my legs. I don't have to use my legs, but Something at a lower tower height. Same thing with shoulder exercises. This is a great exercise. These rear delt flies working the backs of your shoulders, and upper back. Um, very hard to do, even for myself, if I didn't have my feet here, but it's a low intensity and I'm just gonna gradually kind of walk it up this way. For triceps, 
you're also going to be a little bit limited because getting into positions like this are hard. It's going to be harder. Uh, getting at a higher tower height is going to be hard to set up. Possibly laying on your back in some of those positions we discussed might be difficult, although I will show you a secondary way in a second utilizing these little back stands. But one thing is if you're already in this position, I can hold it like a neutral grip and I can kind of walk and again, kind of use my hands this way to kind of do some tricep extensions. But even as I'm saying this, you're gonna be limited in that range of motion. You see I'm only really doing that when I really wanna get that elbow really flexing. So you can do some little mini tricep extensions here. You're just gonna be a little bit limited. If you could get to that pull-up position we talked about, you can do some things here where maybe you can push off your feet a little bit and do some extensions there. But even this, it might be a little tough. If you can get to this back position and you're laying down, another thing you can do is again, using the, that little step here, I can do this extension here. And this way I get a lot more fuller flexion and extension at the elbow to work the triceps to the back of my arms. If this is too, if you're too short, you might have to sit a bit lower on the sled so you can get a little more out of it. So that's an option. The same thing goes for any kind of pullover exercise, working the side of your back or your lats. Uh, again, for people that are a little bit heavier, it gets to be really tough to pull your body up like this. Some people maybe can do that. It'd be great if you can. Otherwise, again, you use this extra boost here to kind of dissipate some of that resistance or intensity. But in my opinion, I wouldn't worry so much about if you don't get to any of these single joint stuff, in my opinion, if you approach a workout, you're just messing around with some pressing, messing around with some pulling, some leg stuff. That's pretty much a total body workout. Anytime you're pulling, you're working your biceps. Anytime you're pressing, doing chest presses or shoulder presses, you're gonna be working the back of your arms anyways. So you are kind of working a little bit total body. Uh, people inevitably start thinking about like, well, what about the midsection? You didn't cover the midsection or your core, so to speak. You're gonna be working your core, just keeping your balance upright for those pushing and pulling. Uh, for a lot of the sit-ups, and I, know, I keep saying this, some of you guys already know this, you can't really sit up away. There's no such thing as spot reduction. So a lot of people that are overweight think about, like, I do a lot of sit-ups. Just get that out of your head right now. Focus on those other factors, like diet specifically. I'm not saying you know never to do like a plank. And you, there's some plank options here. I can put this up to a certain high level and maybe work on just holding this. This will be an option that I definitely think would be good and suitable for most people. Uh, that would be something I'd recommend, but I wouldn't worry so much about doing a lot of the heavy stomach stuff for the idea that I think most people's motivations are to do it, which is just to spot reduce the, the midsection because that doesn't, that doesn't really exist. It's not possible. You can spot enhance it, but can't, you can't really spot reduce any kind of like belly fat by setting up the uh, weight away. And I just feel like a lot of the exercises for the total gym are going to be a little bit more harder to kind of set up and do. Uh, for sure, things are popping in my head now that you could do. I'm just trying to give you guys some basic overview. As basic as this is, this video is going on way, way, way too long. Uh, don't forget to utilize those other modalities too, like the resistance bands or a simple pair of adjustable dumbbells to do the bicep curls. Don't feel like you have to use this. If you can afford or you have some other uh, things around the house, definitely do that. I can do the banded presses, uh, dumbbell presses as well. So you can supplement some things as well. So. Hopefully this is beneficial. Uh, I know I say that every video, but I really genuinely want this to kind of help and reach as many people as possible. I do think this machine is, I say this all the time, the best home gym equipment you could possibly buy, in my opinion, for most people's goals that I've kind of heard from. And I don't want to definitely segment out a large population, percentage of the population that really, in my opinion, needs it and can benefit from it and might, you know, this might not think would benefit them. So any questions, comments, feedback on this video, definitely let me know. I can always do a part two or follow up on this on some other things you guys want to see. You just got to let me know and I'll be happy to do it. I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching.